So in this video, we're gonna talk about avoiding some of the very large costs that every property investor faces when they acquire or take over a new property. Hey, what's up guys, Dan Dravidi here. I hope you're all well. As ever, if you could do me a huge favor and smash the like button and don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon next to it. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a subject which is probably not the first thing that you're gonna be thinking about when you're buying a property. And it's definitely not gonna be up there at the top of the Google search when you're typing in things to do with property investing and development. But it is absolutely something that every property investor should take note of, which is all of the costs. And more importantly, how some of these costs can be avoided. In this video, we're gonna talk specifically about the cost that you have to pay when you buy a property to a local government. Things like council tax and business rates. Now, these are costs that every property owner has to face, whether you're the owner of the property and it's sat there empty, or whether you're inside living in the property and you're having to pay it your prime residence. It doesn't matter where you sit on the spectrum, this is something that you have to deal with. And nine times out of 10, most property investors that I know just accept that they have to pay these costs, regardless of what's going on with the property, what they're doing to it, more importantly, the condition of that property at that moment in time. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you will know that I love to buy properties cheap. I love to get a great deal. And I also love to save costs on everything that I do, because it's not what you earn, it's what you keep. So if you can minimize your costs, you can deliver a better profit on that project. And these costs are no different. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I spend my life on the phone, sending emails, sending things like ASTs and documentation and pictures to local councils, local departments that deal with the council tax and the business rates. And the problem is the churn of staff is quite high. So every three to six months, I have to repeat myself and I have to send the same information over and over again. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with the public sector like this, you're, you're never going to find someone who really wants to deal with your problem or resolving the issue as much as you would in the private sector. Because at the end of the day, you're making their job a little bit more difficult. It's far easier for them if you just ring up and pay it using the automated line. But we're property investors. We're entrepreneurial property people. And we don't want to be paying the things that we shouldn't have to. And this isn't a loophole or an illegal way around it. This is just knowing the detail and knowing the facts on what your property is at that moment in time and how it potentially doesn't have to pay these basically other forms of tax. So let's start with council tax, which is the tax that you have to pay on any residential property, regardless if you're living in it or if you're not and it's empty. You used to get a grace period with some of the local authorities. It was anything from one month to three months. I think actually some of them were given like six to 12 months. Now it's absolutely nothing, not even a single day. And these guys at the department will know the day to the day when a property is sat there empty. And you wouldn't think that they would be this efficient. And there seems to be a huge disparity between these departments because pretty much every department that I deal with can't even work out how to put numbers into a calculator. But these guys, they can tell you exactly when and how much the charge is per day and that property was sat there empty. And there is no way around it if, if that property has to pay the council tax. But there is a way around it. Typically, if you're buying a property to live in, look, you're gonna move into it and you have to pay that council tax. And if you're buying a property to live in, you're not gonna really meet some of the requirements that enables you to get an exemption on council tax. Things like low income or benefit claimants and those sorts of things. So you're gonna to have to pay it if you're living in it. So if you're living in a property and you wanna find a way around paying the council tax, other than having a separate dwelling or an annex, which you might be able to get some business rates on, which we'll come on to, there is no way around it. This is really for those guys who are buying a property to flip or to refurbish and let out uh, and add to their portfolio. Now, we know if the day you buy that property, you become liable for paying council tax, even if it sits there empty, even if it needs a refurb doing to it. However, if that property is not habitable, then you can apply for an exemption removal from the banding temporarily until it does become habitable. 
things like structural works, taking the roof off, removing the kitchen and the bathrooms, the electrics, the heating, all of these things, either combined or on their own, can deem the property to be uninhabitable. Take pictures and send them to the um, council tax department and tell them that the property is uninhabitable. And then they should be able to apply to the valuation office to get that property removed so you don't have to pay the council tax. But be warned, you will have to smash your head against a brick wall until you get to the right people who will listen to you and point you in the right direction and give you the right email addresses and all of those things. To, to get this put through. You're not, it's not gonna be an easy task, even though these guys in the council tax department seem to be far better at their job than anyone else in a public sector. They still don't really wanna help you if you're shifting or moving off the path of just paying the bill. And on some projects, especially like pubs with residential flats above it that are sat there empty, which are completely uninhabitable because there's, there's nothing in there. They can be sat there for years whilst you're getting planning permission or whilst you're doing X, Y, and Z to the commercial or you're building on the, um, or you're building on the car park. You, you could be talking thousands of pounds being saved just by making a phone call, and some pictures and sending them to the right email address. And then that sort of brings me nicely on to the commercial part, because again, if you own commercial property, then you have to pay the business rates when it's sat there empty. Now, if you own one property under the threshold, you will get small business rates exemption or small business rates relief. So basically everything under 15,000 rateable value, you'll qualify for a business rates relief and you won't have to pay it if that's the only property that you own in that company. And that's quite key, one property in one company gets the exemption. So if you're buying multiple commercial properties that potentially could sit there empty and you buy them in separate SPVs or separate limited companies, then guess what? That company is a completely different entity to your first one. So you can still qualify for the small business rate relief. Now, again, very similar to the National Tax Department, these guys are pretty savvy and they will try and find any which way they can to try and charge you those rates. So one of the things that I've had more recently is that they try to prove that the, the company that owned the property wasn't trading, wasn't a trading business. It was actually sat there empty. So if it's deemed to not be in use or there's not a trading business within that property, then the property will be classed as unoccupied. Unoccupied properties do not qualify for small business rate relief. So you could find yourself paying thousands and thousands of pounds every single month across multiple properties, way more than council tax, which will start to really eat into your profit, whether it's from rental income or whether it's from the sale of those assets. So you think about this before you purchase a property and how you purchase it and the use that it's going to be. And I promise you that they will fight you till they are blue in the face, even when all logic is presented in front of them. It just goes out of the window. They have no interest. They just want you to pay the bill and they will not listen to reason, ignore the facts, and you have to escalate it. I have an issue at the moment, a trade and pub. You've probably all seen it on my Instagram. It's doing really well. Such a shame that we had to close it in the second lockdown, but more than happy with how it's going. And that business is a trade and pub within one of my developments. And there is a separate lease for that pub and that business to the holding company. So everything is done exactly the right way it should be to divide the trade and business from the development business. And we have till receipts, stock being purchased, people posted photos on Instagram about how they're buying coffees and drinking beer. You cannot deny that that is a trade and business. But the council, Norwich City Council, are determined to tell me that they don't believe that that is a trade and business. So it doesn't have a rateable value because when I bought the property, it was in need of huge structural repair and it still is, but we've managed to secure that small part. So we got it removed from the rateable list. So we didn't have to pay any business rates. And then we've got a trading business, which has a new lease from way over a year ago. And there is de no denying it that that is a trading business. But the council seem unable to, to accept that that is a trading business. So 
The government grants that have been given to small businesses based on their business rates, we didn't get a penny because of Norwich City's view that we are not a trading business. They are now trying to hit us with unoccupied business rates on a trading property, on a business which is a, which is a thriving pub which has had to close in the second lockdown. It's absolutely obscene, but we continue to fight it because that is what we're dealing with at these council departments. They seem completely disjointed from reality and completely disjointed from national government. So we're in a pandemic, it's a business in, in one of the sectors massively hit, but still doing quite well. And we and that from national government, there's quite a bit of support for that sector, for hospitality. But Norwich City Council don't really wanna give it to you because it doesn't meet with what their computer says, which is no. Coming back to the cost saving. So business rates on commercial property, buying it in an SPV, trading a business through it, qualifies you for small business rates relief. However, if you sit above the threshold, you buy a property which is above 15,000 a year, and you don't qualify for the full exemption, even though you've done everything I've said, there is no trade in business and you won't get the small business rates relief, and that property is in need of major structural repair. So not only can it not be um, habited, there's no electrics, there's no heating, there's no toilet, there's no kitchen, but it's actually structurally in need of major repair. Things like walls needing to be re rebuilt, things like roofs needs to come off and be redone. Whatever it may be, underpinning, whatever. If you follow the same process, take the photos, explain what the situation is, what the problems are, how long you think it's going to be in effect for, then you will be able to have a commercial property removed from the rateable listing temporarily until those structural issues are resolved. But as soon as that work is done, you need to tell the guys because obviously it does become habitable. It, it, it's no longer going through structural repairs, so you will have to start paying the rates. But hopefully once all those major works are done, you can get on with what you want to do with the property and start to make the money that you forecasted by renting it out or by flipping it and selling it on, whatever it may be. These two different sectors can literally be like a vampire for your time. You will spend hours on the phone hours sending emails for them just to be ignored, to never get a reply, or for the same information to be requested two or three months later. That unfortunately is the nature of the beast. And look, you know, when I had a larger portfolio and I uh, ran a multi-million pound investment company, which I have now sold and semi-retired, I had staff who did this for me. And there is really no one who can get into the detail and really take control of this better than you, better than the owners of the house. So yeah, give it to staff, try and get it off your plate, but eventually it comes full circle and you have to deal with it eventually. So my advice is to get proactive and get straight on it and save yourself some money. Yeah, it's gonna take some time, but look, if you don't do it, it's gonna take your time anyway because you're dealing with an incapable department and it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So save yourself some money, save yourself some time, get on top of it and move on to the real world problems, which is buying and selling and renting these properties to make money, which is what we want to be doing, not wasting our time on local departments. But look, that's it from me, guys. Really quick video. Hope you're having a great weekend. Stay safe. Lockdown's nearly over and I'll catch you all on the next video.